Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, my name is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be going over a beginner's guide to the support. So why might you want to pick the support as a beginner? Well, one really good reason to pick the support is that they are extremely forgiving for new players. They're actually really, really good. Um, they're probably one of the best starting classes for any player to play, whether you've played FPS games or not. So the support uses shotguns, which is a fantastic weapon for beginners. It's very forgiving. They do a lot of damage. Headshots aren't really that big of a deal for you. And uh, let's go over some of their perk bonuses. So you get welding efficiency or welding proficiency with support, 3% per level. You use up less of your welder to make welds. You also get increased shotgun damage, 1% per level. Pretty standard stuff, but hey, more damage is great. You get 20% more penetration with shotguns. This actually makes it so firing down hallways with really any shotgun becomes extremely devastating when there's tight groups of Zeds, and it's a really good uh, addition. You get 1% more ammo per level, which is great. Shotguns can shoot through ammo fairly quickly if you're spam firing them, but other than that, uh, just having extra ammo makes them feel a bit more consistent. You have increased weight capacity. This is one uh, one additional weight every five levels up to a max of uh, five. So then it goes to your 15. So you can hold 20 weight in total, making it so you can carry a lot of stuff with support. Usually it's not really uncommon to see support carrying around three shotguns. So and of course, they have the ammo pack and door repair. So the ammo pack makes it so that anybody on your team can interact with you once per round and get ammo from you, which is great. That that provides so much value. Support is one of the few classes that can actually just be potentially AFK the entire uh, match and still be useful. Um, I don't know any other. I don't know of many other classes that can actually boast about that. Um, you can also repair doors. So if a door is completely broken, you can fix it back up. This will take some time, but you can do it. This is great if you have a demo on your team and they want to keep putting their um, explosive onto doors, uh, or if you're holding a particularly a uh, good position by welding certain doors. This is the higher damaging build. This is your main damaging shotgun build, I guess, which uses tactical reload instead of high capacity magazines. High capacity magazines is good on almost every shotgun besides the double barrel, the, um, the doomstick and the buckshot. None of those get increased uh, ammo capacity from high capacity magazines. So if you're using those guns as your primary weapons, I would not recommend taking high capacity mags. Tactical reload will be better in every circumstance. And, so, and tactical reload works for every weapon. Uh, at 10, salvo to get 30% more damage because more damage is nice. You could go with fortitude if you want. You don't necessarily need the extra damage with shotguns. It's just kind of nice to have and bonus health can make you more tanky. Tight choke to decrease the shot. Um, with your perk weapons. This will just make it so that your shots are a bit more consistent at longer ranges and really lets you use the shotgun at longer ranges. And beyond that, if you weren't with most of these, I only really go to uh, level 15. But if you're going to go up to level 20, I have resupply pack, which lets your team get even more ammo as well as armor and you can carry more ammo. Great perk all the way around. And then I usually go with barrage, just being able to shoot your weapons near real time because that's pretty useful. All right, so here we are in this game. Let's talk about your starting you weapon, which is the sets. pump shotgun. And, here come your first and the pump shotgun is really not that bad as a starting weapon. It's pretty powerful. It does have a somewhat slow rate of fire and a somewhat slow reload. And I find the best way to use this is whenever you get a chance. So if you kill somebody, Take the time to reload if you don't see any immediate threats. That's probably the best way to use these um, tube-fed shotguns where you have to load one round at a time. And one thing that's great about support, though, is where in so many other classes, making headshots can really make a difference. Support isn't really necessary. You can shoot things in the body, the legs, the arms, really whatever you can hit. Shotguns generally have enough damage to kill most things with body shots. A little bit of an advanced tip is try to get as many Zeds lined up as possible in one shot so that you don't use as much ammo. This can help you out overall. And it's just overall the pump shotgun is pretty good so long as you're um, aware of its capacity, I guess. Really support is one of those classes that doesn't have any bad weapons. For bloats, you can also, like I just did, shoot their head off with one shot without much difficulty. You can even do this on Hell on Earth a lot of the time. Um, 
the pump shotgun is just a pretty great starting weapon, and it's really not bad to hang on to for a couple of waves. So for your first weapon with support, you actually have a lot of options to pick. Uh, you can take the buckshot early on for a uh, really good uh, conservative weapon for the first couple waves. Uh, you could save up to go for something like the boomstick or the M4, the HC-12. The first weapon I'm going to get for this build is the M4 shotgun. The M4 shotgun is a very strong shotgun, and it's honestly probably one of the best shotguns in the game. Um, it really doesn't have any weaknesses besides its somewhat slow reload speed. And that just being because it's a tube-fed shotgun, you have to load each Pump round individually. Closed. If it didn't have that, then I probably would say it is within the top uh, shotguns. We've got cloak set. Careful. This also has a red dot on it. Once again, aiming is optional for support, um, or at least aiming for the head is optional. So long as you're hitting body shots, you should be okay dealing with most things. This gun also is semi-auto, so you can shoot it extremely fast. Its reload isn't really that bad, and it already has a fairly tight spread pattern. If you have tight choke, then even more so, it's uh, that much better at longer ranges. This can actually tear through pretty much anything in the game. There's really nothing that this shotgun is bad against, and since we're talking about that, support itself is really not bad at fighting any Zed. There's really no Zed in this game that particularly gives you a whole lot of trouble, whether it be crawlers, stalkers, more crawlers, um, clots, bloats, husks, sirens, anything. There's really nothing that support is bad at fighting, whether even going up to like strikes and flesh pounds, you can still kill them very easily by yourself. You don't need any help fighting anything really. Oh yes, I should go over the question, should you buy armor for support early on? You can, but if you're running the extra health perk, it's not really necessary. If you're running extra health, then you get 50% more health, and you should be able to survive the first couple waves without needing any armor. So if you want to be uh, a little bit more stingy with your money, if you want to save up to buy like a tier 4 weapon, maybe the AA-12 or the Doomstick right away, you know, maybe skip it. Uh, but armor early on for support also isn't really a bad idea. It gives you, you know, even more survivability, which is always nice. But fully your choice as to what you want to go with. Uh, the support also has a grenade that's a little bit interesting. So this is the frag grenade. The frag grenade does take a second to go off. Um, it does explosive damage near it as well as throwing out shrap metal that does damage to everything around it. Um, the shrap metal also has a very high chance of hitting you. So you have to be careful with this grenade. This is probably one of the easiest grenades to kill yourself Ooh, with. Nice. So it also doesn't necessarily do the most damage to a single target since it spreads out so far. It's much better as a um, crowd control grenade. So throwing it into a bunch of crawlers, a bunch of stalkers, um, you know, not throwing it into something like the Scrake, but You know, even Scrakes really don't stand that much of a chance against you. Alright, for my second weapon for this loadout, I'm going to pick the Boomstick. The Boomstick is a fantastic weapon. It's extremely strong. It's extremely cheap. Uh, it's probably one of the best, if not the best, tier 2 weapon in the game uh, for its price. The only thing that might beat it in terms of just overall strength would potentially be the center fire, in my opinion. So, this weapon is also pretty forgiving for people who don't have the best aim. This is this has one of the highest spreads out of any of the shotguns, but it fires out some of the most pellets and has some of the highest damages on those pellets. So, this weapon is pretty crazy. Oh, found a medic pistol there. Alright. Keep in mind, you should always be looking out for just things on the ground. Uh, weapons, ammo containers, whatever they might be for support. Support can benefit from them, and you're probably the most likely person in your group to be able to pick something up and use it because you have extra weight. So, double barrel, you can just aim body shots, you can aim headshots. Funny enough, um, the double barrel does do slightly more damage against uh, sirens than any other weapon, um, doing a total of. I believe it was 1% extra damage when shooting a, a siren with the double barrel. 
Now, the secondary fire on the double barrel is that you can fire out both barrels. If you do this while jumping, you can launch yourself backward. Or forward, or upward. Really in any uh, direction you want to go. You can use this uh, to get over fences, to get over railings. I can't really show that here on this map that easily. If I find a fence, I'll try to get over it with the... Well, maybe I can do it just with this rock. So... If you aim directly at your feet, jump and fire, I actually don't think I can do it with this rock. I think it's a bit too high. I mean, you can use either of these weapons as your primary weapon or your secondary weapon. Both are very strong and both um, work just fine. Something that's useful if you have the double barrel with the flesh pounds is that if you do jump up into the air and shoot them, there is a chance that you can just avoid damage entirely. This is actually a pretty good technique against Hans too. Um, for bosses because when Hans goes to do a stab, you can actually jump out of the way of it with the aid of the double barrel. You can get away from him before he can actually stab you and it has a high chance of just staggering anything too. So even when you're doing that, you can make really good distance and give yourself some extra mobility with the aid of the double barrel. Uh, one other thing that I should really mention to any new players playing support is whenever you're going to shop, don't do this. Don't stand, don't smash your face directly into the pod. Because if you're standing directly next to the pod, if your teammates want to get ammo from you, they can't. They'll be interacting with the pod until it closes. Try to stand as far away as possible with you still being able to interact with the trader. So if I'm standing out here, I can still interact with the trader, buy whatever I need to buy. And then my teammates can come over here and just grab their ammo. Last and chance. if you have a um, resupply pack, then their armor as well. I have to power down the pod. So that is very useful. On, you know um, I should mention about upgrades too. Honestly, none of supports weapons really need upgrades. They're all extremely strong without them, so not upgrading your weapon, or if you lose a weapon, uh, it's not that big a deal if you want to save your money to be able to buy it again. Um, and that being said, you can hold more weapons than most people, so you can go potentially with uh, three shotguns if you want. If you're going to do that, I would recommend your third shotgun always be the uh, medic shotgun, simply because, well, first off, it's good, but also you can heal with it. Uh, that'll be shown in our second loadout once we get to that. I should also mention that in Killing Floor 2, shotguns do not work like they do in most other FPS games. Um, in most other FPS games, you can't really have any damage with shotguns at any long range. Uh, not so much in Killing Floor 2. If you can see something, then you can hit it. So even something that far away, don't be afraid to try to shoot it with the shotgun. Because you can still hit it and kill it. It won't do. It won't be as consistent as, say, like sharpshooters' rifles, but it's surprising how far you can shoot with some of support shotguns and really reach out and touch stuff. The M4 is a is a very good example of this. It has a very tight spread. The medic shotgun is another good example of this, and the uh, AA12 is also very good, um, even without tight choke. With tight choke, they're even better at longer ranges. All right, so our second build here for support is going to use high capacity magazines to take advantage of clip fed uh, shotguns. Fortitude, um, like I said, Fortitude or, or Salvo, both are great. Uh, this will be more health, so this will be a bit more tanky, uh, have you have a little bit more survivability, but at the price of a little bit less damage. Um, tight choke once again, you could go with armor piercing shots if you are in a map with a lot of hallways where you really want to uh, hit as many enemies as possible, but I still enjoy tight but I still usually take tight choke over that uh, just so I have a bit more of a consistent long range with my weapons. And then if you were to go beyond level 15, at level 20, once again, I would suggest resupply pack to give ammo to your teammates, uh, to give armor to your teammates, and for you to have extra ammo. Uh, extra ammo will help more with the clip-fed shotguns than with the uh, non-clip-fed shotgun. Um, concussion rounds, honestly, isn't that bad of a choice, but usually you're killing things so quickly that you don't necessarily need to stumble enemies either. And with certain weapons like the Doomstick, you're pretty much guaranteed to stumble something. And if you were level 25, I would probably recommend Barrage still, because clip-fed magazine or clip-fed shotguns can even do better in real time. So, let's begin. Once again, you'll be using your pump shotgun early on, except for now, instead of holding 8, it'll hold 12 shots. This gives you a little bit of an advantage, at least for the first wave, because 
Uh, you will have just extra rounds. It's still best to try to line up enemies with this. And the reload speed honestly isn't that bad not having it with this. It can be a little bit more um, frustrating if you were going to empty the entire tube and then reload the entire thing. But, you know, right now, not a big deal. One thing I should mention about the uh, pump shotgun and just any pump shotgun, whether this be the trench gun or the M4 even, is that you can interrupt the reload to then aim down sights or to fire. So this is kind of like reload canceling, but reload canceling with these type of shotguns is practically neglectable in terms of how much it's actually going to increase your reload speed. And like when I was talking about it with the uh, commandos weapons, something like the stoner, it is much more noticeable with a weapon like that. With a weapon like this, you just let it go through the whole animation, really. All right, now the first weapon I recommend for this build is the HZ-12. Now you could not go with the HZ-12 and go with the nail gun. The nail gun also benefits from this. Um, actually, all of the shotguns, besides, uh, as stated before, the on. buckshot, the double barrel, and the doomstick, don't. But for this, we will take the HZ-12. This is a strange weapon, but I still recommend it for new players because it has a lot of rounds. If you're running the high-capacity magazines, as you can see, you get 24 shots before you need to reload this. And keep in mind, you reload all 24 shots at once. So, that's really useful. Uh, even if it does have a somewhat slower reload speed, that really doesn't matter with how many shots you get. The advantages to this are that, well, first off, you get a lot of shots. This also shoots out quite a bit of pellets, but they're in a tighter pattern than the double barrel. It shoots out the same amount of pellets as the double barrel, but at a tighter uh, formation. The cons to this weapon, honestly, are that it's strange. Um, it's mostly that two-shot pump, two-shot pump. And if you do this fairly quick, it's actually kind of difficult to control. So if you keep doing that, as you can see, you can quickly have a lot of muzzle climb. So you will have to fight that. It's usually best to fire one shot, take a second, fire another shot. Um, not just spam it out as fast as possible, unless, of course, something's directly on top of you. And then, you know, feel free to spam away. Uh, this gun is great for anybody who, well, doesn't like reloading very often. Uh, especially if you're fighting on any sort of map that has very long hallways where you can constantly just keep firing and really not have to worry about ammo. You know, glance down every once in a while, so if the game's a bit too intense for you, this is a fantastic weapon to use uh, in that circumstance because you likely won't have to worry about reloading. Or if you have enough ammo to kill something, the HZ-12 works pretty well against everything. It also upgrades pretty well, too. Um, it has decent scaling upgrades, and overall, it's a pretty decent weapon. This is one of the weapons that can definitely take advantage of the high-capacity magazines. Like I said, if you didn't want to go with this, you could go with the nail gun. The nail gun is semi-auto. Um, you get to shoot it much faster. And the nail gun is overall a bit cheaper because its ammo cost just is much lower than every other gun. The second gun I recommend for this loadout is the HM Tech 301 Medic Shotgun. This shotgun is fantastic for the team, and it's also just a pretty good shotgun overall. It has some of the tightest spread out of any of the shotguns, which is great for shooting at very long ranges, or for trying to hit headshots with it. Of course, you get the healing darts, which are lock-on, and you can heal your team. Um, and it holds 10 rounds in it, all of which are reloaded at once. Uh, or in this case, it holds 15 if you go with the larger magazine. Either way, it's strong regardless, and it's one of support's best weapons to take, uh, simply because it helps out the team, and it's really not a bad backup shotgun. I don't usually use this as my primary shotgun, or maybe even my backup shotgun, because sometimes I take three shotguns with support, so this might be a backup to your backup. And it is quite a powerful backup when this is your backup weapon. Some people have stated that the medic shotgun is weak, which that is true. It is weaker compared to the other shotguns. Um, and same with when you upgrade it. It is weaker than most of the shotguns. That being said, it is still a shotgun, so it's not weak. Hitting body shots is still pretty acceptable with this gun. Hitting headshots is actually quite easy with this shotgun because of how tight a spread it has. 
and it really doesn't lack in damage overall because it makes up for it with just being semi-auto and having a high amount of DPS. If need be, you can spam fire it and it really has very little climb to it. So it's pretty controllable and it's just overall a fantastic gun. If you combine it with the HZ-12, you have a pretty strong setup using the high capacity magazines, capable of killing pretty much anything and being able to support the team. There's really nothing fancy about this or any, you know, advanced techniques really. There's support really doesn't have many advanced techniques in general. Um, the most advanced is probably the double barrel trick where you can jump a bit higher or bounce yourself back. And that's pretty easy to do so long as you are able to jump and fire both barrels at the same time. This particular build would also be very, very strong with the AA-12. That would be ideal for you to have. Um, you would have to, if you wanted to include the AA-12 with this, you'd have to get rid of one of these guns. I recommend the uh, HZ-12 and then maybe get something like the Buckshot if you are going to be using all of these in combination. All right, and that will do it for this video, talking about support. Uh, so, as stated, support is an amazing class for any beginner, uh, especially even if you have no FPS experience whatsoever, if you've never played an FPS game in your life. Support is one of the most forgiving classes in this game. Uh, all other weapons are powerful, there's really no bad weapons that they have, most of their perks are also pretty great. There's really not any perks that stand out that are just terrible, in my opinion. Um, try these loadouts, try out these weapons, see what you think about them. Uh, once again, this isn't to discredit like tier 4 or tier 5 weapons, uh, they work great on support as well. This is just simply to make cheap weapons for people. If you want an even cheaper build than this, that's also pretty strong. Try taking something like the Dragon's Breath and the um, Buckshot. Both those work. Dragon's Breath does damage over time. It's a pretty good weapon. And the Buckshot is just super cheap. So, there you go. Uh, as stated though, pick whatever two weapons you want with support. You can't really go wrong with them. All of their weapons are fantastic. Um, so, next time we're going to be talking about Medic, which is a bit more of a... Well, I guess any of these classes you could say is a bit more complex than support. Support is just a really solid, easy to... Easy to learn, easy to master class. So tell me what you guys thought about this video. If you're new here, be sure that you're subscribed. That way you get to see any of my new content when it comes out. And uh, give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye!